So we've got headline earnings per share up almost 20%. Dividends uh, per share up is around just over 21%. Revenue up across the board. Take us over the period that was because we know that inflationary pressures is starting to impact the overall margin. Yeah, I think if, you, if we looked at our first six months um, and we, we looked at our, if I can call it, uh, consumer buoyancy in terms of the spend and the frequency in our restaurants, it was a, it was a pleasant surprise package. If you look at the negativity in the marketplace, uh, over the last kind of 12 months or so in terms of what's been happening out there. Uh, I must say it, uh, it worked very well for us in the first six months uh, of our new financial year. Mm. Uh, the Christmas period also working very much in your favour. The question is when we start to see all these inflationary pressures, but which is not only experienced by the, uh, the restaurant chains, but also by the overall food retailers, it's a tough scenario. Do you pass this on to the consumer? How are you coping with this? It's a, it's a very difficult call. It's something that we live with uh, on a daily basis uh, in the sense that you cannot keep on po passing what I would call food inflation prices uh, just onto the consumer. Uh, otherwise, uh, frequency will be, uh, will be affected. So it's a, it's a fine balancing act of how you can manage the food inflation and obviously other pressures, whether it be petrol prices, rates and taxes, uh, electricity charges and so forth, all affecting uh, the consumer's wallet. So it's one of those ones we, we manage and uh, finesse uh, hopefully on a, on a daily basis, but passing it on to the consumer is not an option. Let's also touch on your most recent acquisition, Doregos. You'll be paying around uh, 30 million rand uh, for this. Uh, give us an indication of what you are expecting from the, the acquisition perspective. Is it going to be a mixture of organic growth and uh, acquisitive growth? Do you see a mixture of these two coming to the fore? I think it, it is a mixture, but I think uh, before uh, we get there, I think the most important thing for us is to integrate the Doragos franchisees into, into the Spur Corp uh, family, uh, which will probably take us a, a few months. Uh, then also at the same time bring uh, uh, our experience in terms of many years of franchising to the benefit of those franchisees from a product innovation point of view and obviously having a look at you know, what the opportunities are for them. But uh, the principle being is why we identify this business. We do see a growth opportunity uh, going forward. Uh, we believe it is a market that is growing in South Africa, uh, and there's an opportunity for us to grow this brand going forward. Uh, with regards to bedding this acquisition down, give us an indication of what your strategy is also going to be across the African continent. How are you going to integrate all the brands across Africa? It seems that it is one of the points where we are going to see quite a lot of growth coming through uh, on the continent and a lot of the retailers and restauranteurs are looking to take advantage of this. Yeah, I think we've got a very exciting sort of uh, next six months in terms of our opening in Nigeria and Kenya and Zambia. Uh, and at the same time, uh, you know, in, in existing markets, we're opening more restaurants in Botswana and in Namibia. Uh, and we're also uh, pursuing some other opportunities in, uh, in other African countries as well. Uh, but mainly these are on the spur forefront. And, uh, you know, we've, we've been working on this for quite a bit of time now uh, and speaking about it. And, uh, you know, I think the hard work and the, and the drive is starting to bear its fruits in terms of store openings. But... Uh, from the across all three or four brands now, I think uh, there will be opportunities over the next at least two to three years for some real exciting opportunities on the African continent for us to grow these brands. So, Pierre, I mean, the truth is when you're looking at all these territories that you're heading into, uh, Zambia, Kenya, Botswana, Nigeria, uh, the truth is that the big question uh, comes to the fore. How do you actually get your products to those regions? Tell us a little bit about logistical uh, issues and your overall distribution strategy. Well, I think logistics is, uh, it, it, it is a challenge in Africa. There's, there's no question. Uh, product availability in terms of certain of the menu items is, uh, is, 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 is problematic. But having said that, uh, what we've done for quite a few years, having been in Africa and been open in Africa for quite a few years in certain territories, is that we, we source a lot of local product uh, and trying to, I suppose, initiate relationships with local supply chain guys also at the same time working with the importers into those territories so that you can make your logistics work. Is it a challenge? Sure, but you can overcome it. Uh, and it's again it's in terms of the groundwork that you do in these territories to, to make sure that you have a sustainable model for the franchisee in that country going forward. So, sir, are we expecting a double digit growth for uh, Spur as well into this financial year? Well, you know, I, I always like to talk after the numbers, but uh, as a management team and as our philosophy, yes, we want to ensure that we have double-digit growth, but um, hopefully I can talk to you by uh, September this year and say it's true.